Hi scholars, I'm so excited to continue reading our Magic Treehouse book, Civil War, on Sunday. We've got a few more chapters left, so let's go ahead and jump in after we review our purpose for reading. We know we're working to learn more about Clara Barton, who is a historical figure. We're practicing understanding our characters, and we've been practicing summarizing. Today, we're gonna to pick back up where we left off with chapter seven. Chapter seven is called Helping Hands. The firing came to an end. The horses calmed down. The smoky air began to clear. Clara handed Jack and Annie each a canteen. Fill these quickly, she said. We have no time to waste. Jack's legs felt wobbly as he followed Annie to the creek. They filled their canteens, then climbed back into the wagon. Keep alert, said Clara. Look for the wounded as they come off the battlefield. She snapped the reins. The horses started off again. As they bumped along, Jack looked ahead for wounded soldiers. There, said Annie. She pointed to a man limping toward them and waving his arms. The man looked very young, more like a teenage boy. His uniform was torn and bloody. It wasn't a blue uniform though, it was gray. Clara pulled the horses to a stop. But he's a Confederate soldier, said Jack. When someone is hurt, you give them a helping hand, no matter who they are, said Clara. Her voice got softer. I have seen courage and kindness on both sides of this war. Sometimes things are not as simple as they seem. Hmm, I'm gonna stop and think about what Jack wants. In the text, Jack says, but he's a Confederate soldier. And that makes me think Jack doesn't really want to help him because the Confederate soldier is fighting for the other side. Hmm. I guess that's why Jack is a little bit hesitant. But now Clara Barton is telling Jack to help the man. Why do you think Clara is telling Jack to help the Confederate soldier? Well, in the text, Clara says, when someone is hurt, you give them a helping hand, no matter who they are. I have seen courage and kindness on both sides of this war. Hmm. So that makes me think that Clara wants men, regardless of what side of the war they were on, to be safe and alive. She's willing to help whoever it is to make sure that everyone is okay, and she wants Jack to do the same. Jack was glad they stopped to help the soldier. Wow, Jack has changed his mindset. He jumped out of the wagon. Do you need a helping hand, he asked the young man. Thank you, the soldier said softly. Jack helped him into the back of the wagon. The soldier lay down on a pile of blankets and closed his eyes. Jack climbed back onto the seat beside Clara. Clara snapped the reins and they rode on. They came across more ragged men resting in the shade of an oak tree. These soldiers all wore blue uniforms. Again, Clara stopped the horses. See if any of those men need a ride to the hospital, she said to Jack and Annie. Jack glanced at the soldier sleeping in the back of the wagon. Can a Confederate and a Union soldier be together? He asked worriedly. Clara nodded. Sometimes men are simply too sick and too tired to be enemies anymore, she said. Sometimes they even know each other. Many families and friendships have been torn apart by this war. Let's go, said Annie. Hopping out of the wagon, Jack followed her. They carried their canteens to the men under the oak tree. Hi, said Annie. Does anyone need to go to the hospital? Only John, our drummer boy, a soldier said. He's suffering from heat stroke, but we all need some water, miss. Jack saw a young boy lying on the ground. His eyes were closed. Oh, Jack, whispered Annie, he looks just like you. The boy did look a lot like Jack, just a few years older. We better get him to Clara's ambulance right away, Annie said. She handed her canteen to one of the tired soldiers. Another soldier lifted the drummer boy to his feet. The boy opened his eyes and mumbled a few words. He tried to walk, but he swayed as if he were about to faint. Wait, Jack grabbed the boy. We'll give you a helping hand, he said. And the drummer boy put his arms around Jack and Annie's shoulder. Wow. 
Jack jumped right into helping that drummer boy, even though he was super hesitant before. Why do you think Jack helped the drummer boy? Well, we know in the text that it said, Jack was glad they had stopped to help the soldier. So that let us know Jack's mind has changed. He knows that it feels really good to be able to help someone and he wants this boy to be saved and helped as well. That's why Jack decided to stop and help this boy without any hesitation. Just a little further, John, Annie said. You're doing great, just a little further. The drummer boy moved as if he were walking in his sleep. His head hung down. His feet shuffled in the dust. Take good care of him, one of the men called. We can't do without him. Hmm, I wonder why they said that. But that, scholars, is the end of chapter seven. We've been working on summarizing each chapter. So let's take a second to summarize chapter seven, helping hands. What are the most important facts that you would include in a summary of chapter seven, helping hands? Remember, we're just gonna do it in three to four sentences. We don't have to include every little detail, but just the main ideas and most important parts. What would you guys say? I would say that in chapter seven, helping hands, Jack and Annie left the wagon to help the sick and injured soldiers on the battlefield. Just like this. One soldier was a Confederate, so Clara taught Jack how to care for every soldier, regardless of which side they fought for. Jack and Annie also helped a drummer boy who was suffering from heat stroke. And that's the end of chapter seven, and so that's all I would say. Just a few quick sentences to describe the main ideas. Let's go ahead and read chapter eight. That way you can practice summarizing that chapter as well. Chapter eight is called Brothers. Clara Barton had turned the wagon around. She helped Jack and Annie lift the drummer boy into the back. The soldiers said he has heat stroke. Annie told Clara, his name is John. The boy lay down next to the sleeping Confederate soldier. He does have heat stroke, Clara said. The other boy also has a high fever. We must get them to the hospital at once. Can you two stay in the back of the wagon and do as I tell you? Sure, said Jack and Annie. Clara dampened two clean cloths with water from Jack's canteen. Gently pressed these cloths against their faces to help them cool off, she said. She gave the cloths to Jack and Annie. Then she went to the front of the wagon and climbed in. The wagon started forward. Jack and Annie gently patted the soldiers' faces with the damp cloths. Jack looked at the young men lying side by side. The two seemed far more alike than different. In another time and place, they might have been friends, Jack thought. Finally, the wagon arrived at the field hospital. The Confederate soldier was put on a stretcher and carried to a tent. Two soldiers wearing bandages put the drummer boy on a stretcher. Could you stay with John a while? Clara Barton asked Jack and Annie. Sure, said Jack. Try to bring down his fever, Clara said. A nurse will give you ice packs to press against his skin. Find me when his fever is lower. Why does Clara ask Jack and Annie to stay with John? She's the nurse, I think she should stay. But why does Clara ask Jack and Annie to stay with John? What do you guys think? What was her motivation behind doing that? Well, in the text it says, a nurse will give you ice packs to press against his skin. Find me when his fever is lower. So it sounds like that lets me know Clara asked Jack and Annie to help because Clara wants this soldier to still get care and help. But she knows that Clara has got to go to other people and help them too. So she knows that this is a task Jack and Annie can handle. So she wants them to do it so that she can go other places. The drummer boy was carried into an empty tent. Jack and Annie followed. John was put on a cot. Then a nurse brought some rags and a bucket filled with ice. Jack and Annie were left alone with the boy. Jack wrapped some ice in a rag. He pressed the ice pack against the boy's head, neck, and arms. Annie fanned the air to cool John off and keep away the flies. Jack felt so hot, he pressed an ice pack against his own face for a moment. Then he looked up drummer boys in his Civil War book. He read, this is what he read. The Civil War was the last war to use drummer boys. 
The drum beat was used to give orders to soldiers. Different beats told them when to eat, how to march, and even how to fight. On smoky battlefields, the boys drumming helped soldiers find one another and keep together. Wow, this text evidence or real facts and information helps me understand why earlier the soldier said, we can't do it without him when Jack and Annie were taking the drummer boy away. Wow, said Jack. He closed the book and pulled out his notebook and wrote, drummer boy equals really important job. Suddenly, John shouted. Jack looked up from his notebook. The drummer boy was still asleep, but he was waving his arms as if he was having a nightmare. Annie shook the boy's arm. Wake up, John, she said. You're okay, wake up. The drummer boy opened his eyes. You were having a bad dream, said Annie. You're safe now. You'll see your family again soon. No, no, the boy said. He sounded frantic. I have to go back to the battlefield. No, you don't have to fight anymore, said Annie. You can go home and be safe. No, the boy said. They need me. They need my drum. He sounded more and more upset. Jack thought about their list. Put aside your own feelings, he remembered. Okay, John, said Jack. You can go back as soon as you feel better. Jack, said Annie, he'll get hurt or killed. I'm afraid for him. Me too, Jack said softly, but we have to put our own feelings aside. That's one of the things on our list. Annie sighed. Okay, she said sadly. She looked at John. If you want to fight again in the Civil War, you can, if that's what you really want. Thank you, the boy whispered. You know, you're the bravest kid I've ever ever met, said Jack. The drummer boy smiled at Jack. You look just like my little brother, he said hoarsely. You look just like my big brother, said Jack, except I don't have a big brother. I don't have any brothers. The three of them laughed. The drummer boy's laugh was very soft. The boy laid his head back on his pillow and closed his eyes again. In a moment, he was sleeping peacefully. A smile was on his lips. Annie felt his forehead. His fever's gone down. And she said, we should go tell Clara. Annie left the tent. Jack got up slowly and followed her. When he reached the entrance of the tent, he turned and looked back. The shadows of twilight fell across the boy's calm, sleeping face. It was strange. Jack hardly knew the drummer boy, but he felt they could be brothers. Listening to the cannon fire in the distance, Jack was afraid for the boy. Will he live to see his family again? Jack wondered. Good luck, John, he said softly. With a heavy heart, Jack stepped out into the warm evening air. Scholars, that's the end of chapter eight. Chapter eight, remember, was called Brothers. Now you have an opportunity to practice summarizing the most important parts of chapter eight in just three to four sentences. Remember, you can start by saying, in chapter eight, brothers, and then go into your explanation about what happened. Make sure you use the characters' names throughout your summary. You can do it, scholars.